this quick little video is about FP1 for full arch using multi-unit abutments. In an ideal situation, the day that you take the teeth out, when you do your conversion, you're going to want to make ovate ponic spaces in between these intaglio surfaces to try to thicken the zirconia around the area. And you can see this is the initial, this is after a patient's been healed, and this is the final resorts, and this is actually a, a bar-supported PMMA full arch. The challenges of this particular case was that we had no, um, little to no interocclusal space and the patient needs to be opened up a good bit. He actually had implants in 23 and 26 sites that were just above the tissue and were converting to multi-unit abutments. You know you're going to have 1.5 millimeters above this, which further decreases the interclusal distance for our prosthetics, making it much more challenging. He did not want to remove these implants but merely place two more implants in the back. We've talked about the issues associated with that. He was okay with moving forward. As you can see, further issues, and that you can see, appreciate the collapse of the bite on both sides and the challenges facing when we're trying to stay FP1 for the top and FP1 for the bottom. Obviously, he'll have to be opened back up. We have to confirm his vertical and CR relationship and get our implants in the correct positions. Extensive wear on the upper arch. Just appreciate the Panorex pre-op. So the, again, these are old implants. We're going to place six implants on top, two implants on the bottom, do an upper, lower FP1. So this is um, after we've placed the implants. You can see these are the multi-unit abutments here. You can see how they're super, you know, higher than the crest of the soft tissue. And you can see that's the only thing we could do with those multi-unit abutments we won't be able to make custom the only other option would be to do custom abutments on th these two implants but we're doing a pmma bar supported overdenture and you it's very difficult to mill into that into the multi-unit abutments down here over custom abutments so we wouldn't be able to do custom abutments on these two with a bar on top of it and pmma on top um, but you can see how the the bar has has um, convexities into the soft tissue to try to recreate the the soft tissue profile, right? You can also appreciate the depth of the multi-unit abutments inside the tissue on the upper arch as compared to the lower arch. So you get much better tissue adaptation for FP1 when the multi-unit abutments are subcrestal and let and not as great if they're supercrestal. Even opening his bite, you can see we had some challenges, but we're able to continue to stay FP1 for this guy, for the upper and the lower, and open his bite eight millimeters on the top. You can see a little bit of multi-unit abutment showing here in the platform of the implant here. Before and after results. Before and after results. So this is the day of conversion so the day we took his teeth out placed implants and did immediate loaded full upper and lower temps this is the before and after result of that case i'll pull up another case example this lady wants to go fp1 for the upper arch so i'll remove the visualization meshes this is currently what she has obviously her midline's off and she's fp3 so we're going to move her to fp1 and we'll just zoom in you can see the midline's corrected. Let's remove her facial image. And you can see that wax up, getting the correct midline, getting the correct bite plane on both sides. The issue that I'm seeing with this case is the multi-unit abutments are supra-crestal on the top across the arch. So there's going to be difficulties for many aspects, one of which is... Um, getting this cleansable for the patient. So even if we're able to wax this up and stay FP1, that's fine. We're gonna have a gap between the tissues. If at all possible, the restorative doctor in an ideal situation would remove these multi-unit abutments, place some shorter multi-unit abutments so that we could rest restore even at the crest of the soft tissue, ideally, subcrestal being the best but if we went that far deep we would lose our ability to, to stay fp1 we would automatically go into fp2 also given the vertical height component of this patient she's probably going to be fp2 and not fp1 
Um, FP1 would close her up too much. Final thoughts, um, too much multi-unit abutment sticking out. This should be down as much as possible to, again, to make this cleansable, because if you're milling a bar or zirconia, the platform of the zirconia is gonna rest on this multi-unit abutment, and then it's gonna have to drop down and then go across and then come back up. And all this is gonna be a food trap, a bacteria trap, it's gonna be a nightmare. The only other way to handle that to, is to have the zirconia arch go across the multi-unit abutments from here to here, but you'll see you'll be left with a large gap that's not gonna be able to be filled in unless you wanna do some type of tissue. Again, if you add tissue, that's gonna be a, a problem. Best recommendation for this case is to reduce the multi-unit abutment height, so bring these back down as far as possible. So remove this, take new scans, send back new scans. Or if you wanna to stick to this, we're either gonna have a gap between the multi-unit abutments and the soft tissue, or it's gonna be a food trap. You just have to fig figure out how you wanna move forward. Again, my best recommendation is to swap out the multi-unit abutments and restart scans over.